Uh, everybody knows us, I think for the most part, Barry and I, but Eric, Robbie, why don't you guys give a little intro and uh, let's do this. So everybody, you probably know me, the, the nerd in the flat bill hat. Barry, by the way, good to see you, good brother. To see you too, been a minute speaking of uh, nerds, speaking uh, of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of nerds, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, Robbie T, I'm a lead conversion nerd, and I started off in this whole real estate game as an ISA. And, uh, you know, what's really kind of cool is I am, I always kind of tell people like Eric has always been the face of Patch Realty. He runs it. I'm kind of like this internal nerd with systems and stuff. So honestly, I'm excited because I learn every time Hatch talks about the showing partner model. So uh, I'm excited to share and learn from the, the, the OG over there. So I'll kick it over to you, Hatch. Oh, that's so kind of you, man. Uh, I'm out of Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, it's so nice in Fargo. Why y'all aren't here right now is beyond me. <laughs> Gabe has come to Fargo before. It's pretty rad, isn't it, Gabe? It was. It was cold that day, but we had a blast. It was, I want to say it was like negative 14, but we oh had an gosh. incredible time. Best fried pickle in my life at some place called the Toad or the Frog or the something. Toasted Frog. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> uh, so so I, I, wear, uh, I wear a couple of different hats. One is I get to serve as CEO and owner of Hatch Realty. We're at Team Ridge. Uh, we function as uh, a, a team. We're 52 people strong uh, right now, and we've uh, we've had a pretty large amount of success uh, over the last number of years. But ultimately, the last 18 months has been a major catalyst for that. And so, last year, uh, we closed on 866 properties in Little Fargo, North Dakota, and a couple expansion markets. Uh, now today, uh, we are, I think we've already pended and closed about 630 houses this year. So we think we're on our way to about 1300. We'll see how the year ends up, but God has been good. And we have been hard at work to say the least. And so that's, that's where I spend talking the talk here. We're, we're, we're learning for somebody who's already what 600 plus this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's been wild. And we, we are dedicated to the showing partner model and the ISA model. They're two of the big key elements in our ecosystem that we've been doing for years and it's changed the scope and the trajectory. And we'll certainly go into that. I spend the other uh, 60% of my time, 40% at Hatch Realty and 60% at Hatch Coaching, uh, where Robbie and I are partners here. Uh, he coaches on lead conversion. I coach on team building and development. And so I work more with rainmakers. He works more with uh, producers and ISAs, but we intercross, I mean, we speak each other's languages. Just we uh, we both have our masters in our different areas. So that's what we do. That's why, why uh, life is good as I get to work with Robbie all the time. And I still to this day don't have a Wailopo t-shirt and i don't know what i have to do to get a y lopo t-shirt but i'm a little fired up right now all right um, <laughs> you, you, all i gotta do you just had to tell me because i am annoying I, I there was a hoodie that came out <laughs> he had a y lopo hoodie and literally for a month every other day i'm like hey hey you know what he sends me it's not the right hoodie he's he i wanted the zip up hoodie he sends me the the oat and i'm like dude you were supposed to send the one with the zipper he's like oh my god <laughs> And he's not kidding. I hear about this on every meeting we have. He's like, where's my, so, where's my hoodie? I got with you. Zipper, guys. With the zipper. I got you. I will be annoying for you because I'm going to be super selfish in this. And just, I am thrilled. I actually wanted to be on this just to listen and be able to ask questions. Cause I know you guys are absolutely crushing it. And so I'm really excited to hear about it. Thank you. I, yeah, I'm by in the, the way, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a two XL. We're just going to get that. <laughs> that, re that reminds me of the time Kiwi sent me a medium. So I got all kinds of Kiwi stories. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, let's dive into this. I know we've got, uh, we're, we're, man, over 60 people in here. Uh, I would love for you to dive in and please, you know, don't, don't get too far ahead of us. I'd start with the basics, but let us know kind of the idea, how to start, how to get, for those of us that have never done this, but very interested, I'd love kind of like that beginning to then how you're now crushing it with 600 plus sales. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've studied and I've, I've looked at across the industry, I've studied the top teams to see what health looks like. And, and the question is, how many agents do you have? And I actually think that's the wrong question to ask. I think the question that I would ask is, how many people do you have that are full-time in your ecosystem, right? You have your new agents, your seasoned agents, your ISAs, your admin, and everyone else in the mix. And as I study top teams, people that are in an average price range of probably two to $400,000, the best ratio I saw that was a healthy ratio was you would do 20 transactions for every one team member. And so if you look at, if you look at it, like Gabe, how big is your team in Boise? 
Well, so we're, we're restructuring right now. So we were back in the day around that 1520, but we're, we're starting fresh, which is why I'm excited about this to start building it correctly. Yeah. And but I, we're, were right. you doing three, three to 400 transactions with the 15 to 20 people? Yeah, you know, we're probably like a seven to 800. Wow. Yeah, we, we were up there, but you know, we had a couple of satellite teams like you did too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I know where you're going with this. It was key people were doing a majority of that. Yeah, well, what I found out is that it, it is it is irresponsible to think that we're going to get the same results out of the new person as we do the seasoned person. Mm -hmm. And what I also found out is that the seasoned person is our biggest flight risk. I think that all of us are afraid of what's going to happen when Barry really gets great at selling real estate. He's going to leave me, right? And because of that mindset, uh, and because of uh, the way in which our teams are built, and we're not going to get the same juice and the same squeeze out of it. Like, think of this, let's say I'm the team owner, and I have all my seasoned agents right here. If I want to add people to my ecosystem, I'm going to put them at the same table. Well, I just pissed off my seasoned agents. Dad has other kids, so he doesn't love me as much. There's not enough pie to go around. And now I'm giving the same at bats to people that are untrained, inexperienced, underwhelming with their performance, and I'm not going to get a juice out of the squeeze. So I, I want to I want to explain the why. Let, let's talk about new agents, right? New agents have an 84% failure rate in this industry, and 50% of quotes are made up according to Abraham Lincoln. So whatever it may be, I still know that uh, new agents tend to not make it more than they make it. Hey, and real quick, Eric, I, want, I want to answer Thomas's question because I was thinking the same thing. When you're saying team members, you're adding, are you talking agents? Or are you including like staff and everything? But doesn't matter. Oh, interesting. That's, okay. that's, that's the joy in all this is it doesn't matter where you would add somebody. And I'm going to get back to that point here because I want to just iterate that adding an agent and expecting just that agent to do 20 deals for you if they stand on their own, that equation won't work because their first year or two, it's momentum, right? Robbie, what are the stats of how long it takes to convert a lead from a portal lead to a pay-per-click lead? Yeah, our, our data shows that PPC leads take 640 days to go from registration to close on average. Now, of course, that's because we're converting, you know, at about 4% on PPC leads and we're converting those long-term opportunities that yeah, most that. people never get to convert because we, we have systems and messaging in place and ISAs to keep chasing and keep chasing where most people give up after right away, <laughs> if they even make an attempt at all. But yeah, yep. it takes almost two years. Let's call it almost two years. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the, here's the mindset, and we're still staying on the why. Here's the mindset of an agent. I have so much business, I need to give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And let's say I have five mm -hmm. really solid leads, and these five solid leads I can give to a buyer agent, I'm on a 50-50 split with them. And so I'm going to give to this new buyer agent. And I'm going to expect that uh, they're going to bring back all five of those for me. It's a $10,000 commission each. So I'm going to make 25 grand. They're going to make 25 grand. That's the mindset of everybody that's watching this right now is I'm going to grow. I'm going to add 40 agents. And then each one of them is going to do all these sales. I'm going to make all this money. And that doesn't work that way. One plus one does not equal two when it comes to adding real estate talent. And so here's what happens is the, the, the new agent who's untrained, uh, unkept, they're not going to do five out of five. They're going to do maybe three out of five. And that's being generous, y'all. Mm -hmm. I say y'all like I'm not from Fargo. I'm from Fargo, okay? So nonetheless, <laughs> now they get 15,000 and I get 15,000. That's still 15 grand. That's still a nice win. But that agent's likelihood of making it is slim and none. So I'm probably going to lose those relationships long-term. Uh, I'm probably not going to give them exemplary service like they deserve. And so the likelihood of them referring is that much less. And so we have a broken model and a broken system. I don't think you should ever hire a buyer agent ever again. To be a buyer agent means you earn that spot rather than are given that spot. Because here's the math again, five transactions, five leads. I can close all five of those. Gabe, you can close all five. Barry, you can close all five, right? Instead of giving that to somebody else, why don't I have a showing partner? And in its purest form, you can do the showing partner a lot of different ways, but here's what Robbie and I endorse. A showing partner is a new salaried agent. Mm -hmm. It is not a commission-based only agent. And here's why. 
If you hire on somebody who is new to real estate, they're one of these five. Number one, they have a sugar daddy or sugar mama. Number two, they have a trust fund. Number three, they have a second job. Number four, they have massive, massively bad financial habits. Number five, they've been good with their money and are prepared to go four to six months without making a paycheck. Which is and like that's not... <laughs> no, it's, it, that, that's why it's my pinky, right? That's why it's a small one is because so few people can actually be this right here. And this is who we're looking for is we're looking for these people and none of these scream to me massively motivated. There are outliers, of course, but I don't love this option. If you bring on somebody in a salaried position, what you're saying to them is you don't have to work in the restaurant industry anymore. You don't have to work retail. You don't have to work this office job that has a glass ceiling and you don't want to be middle management, right? Mm -hmm. We're saying to the world who loves HGTV and loves sales and has some savvy but can't go into a full-time commission job, there's another way into real <clears throat> estate. Mm -hmm. And so you bring that person on. In Fargo, North Dakota, we pay that person $2,500 a month. In a higher, our, our average sales price is 260,000 bucks. So say you're in Seattle where your average sales price is six grand, uh, 600,000. You may pay that person 45,000 a year instead of 30,000 a year. I'm not worried about the minutia here, but, uh, but Gabe and Barry, I hope this is an okay promo. On our Hatch coaching channel on YouTube, we have a couple of videos that go into massive depth of the, the little nuances. And I'm not going to spend all my time. Robbie, if you could provide a link to that channel uh, here Watch in the chat, I think that'd be all valuable. things Hatch coaching. There you go. Oh, That's how you. I feel about it. All right. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. You guys are crushing it and you're approaching it ethically, but I'll shut up now. Yeah. Well, so no, just real quick, I, want to, kind of I think you said it, but maybe not. So it's salaried. It's not an hourly position yeah. uh, based on your average price. And you, I'm sure you guys go deeper of that in your videos. Yeah. Uh, and these are licensed. I just want to make sure yes. you're yes. licensed agents. Just make sure everybody caught that. All right. I'll shut licensed up. Licensed agents. Now, well, remember Hatch, I said that. Hatch, one more thing real quick. So you talked about how this is appealing to that, that person working in the service industry. It's also appealing to that teacher who's supremely talented, but making 50, $60,000 a year, but can't even fathom the idea of going six to 12 months of making nothing. Or that engineer who has a 80 to $90,000 comp package, who's so extrovert, who wants to get out of being in engineering. So it's not just, you know, the service industry, it's that transition point for, you know, professionals as well that wanted to get, get into real estate. So just wanted to add that piece as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spot on Robbie. I want to go back to those five leads that I know I can kill, that I can slay. I don't give those to a buyer agent. I instead give them to me. And I have a showing partner who is the nurse to my doctor. Think of it. Step into a hospital. The doctor does very little that's client facing. They do the consultation and they do the heavy lifting of the surgery or the prescription, whatever it may be. The doctor is there not for the relationship building, although the best are also building relationships. They're there uh, to do the, the, the things that are the most skilled. Why do 84% of realtors not make it after two years is because they don't develop those nuances because they don't get enough at bats and they don't like, they're not practicing enough. And there's so many reasons, but in this ecosystem, the showing partner is not doing negotiations. They're opening the doors they're doing all of the communications in this market as we find it today, a massive, massive seller's market. The number of touches a seller, get, a buyer should get is way more than it ever has been because they're losing more. Speed mm -hmm. matters more now than ever. Your clients deserve more than just you because they can't win. The, let me say this. They can win with you, but they'll have a better chance of winning with you and a partner. And so these five deals here that are worth $50,000, each one's worth 10 grand. And I know I can kill all five. Let's say it takes two months for me to convert. I'm going to pay $2,500 a month for that salary. So guess what? I keep $45,000, 45 grand. The other five grand goes to paying that salary. The client has a better experience. The likelihood of getting referrals is that much greater. 
the agent, the showing partner, they've now been working on getting their MBA in real estate because they get to work alongside me instead of being thrown to the wolves. Mm -hmm. And when we throw our people to the wolves, we wonder why they're not successful. And it's because we're bad leaders. We're bad trainers. We're bad at equipping our people because we just see, I have five deals and I can get 25,000 bucks off of this. And we just throw them and hope and pray that they work and hope and prayer will not make an agent successful. Oh, I'm fired up. No kidding. I love that. So, and, and, and you started touching on, I'm sure we're going to go deeper, Christina asked. So who's actually writing the offers handling escrow? You kind of were just going into that. Yep. The, 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 the heavy lifting is all done by the agent because Gabe, if you're a new agent in this market and you're competing with 10 other offers and you're the one coaching that buyer, you're going to lose every time, man. I mean, if you're really good, you might start to win a little bit, but wouldn't we rather put that in the hands of somebody who's seasoned and an mm -hmm. expert? Because this is what people are doing is they're saying, here's my business and I'm going to add more people at the same table. But instead, look at this. Bring the person and put them underneath your talent. Mm -hmm. Because I spoke to it before is the biggest flight risks are our talent. Mm -hmm. The ones that we worry about the most are our talent. The ones that give us the biggest headaches are our talent. But when you give them responsibility and authority, what you're buying is a deeper seated relationship. You're mm -hmm. buying a longevity because you're now developing that person's business. Mm -hmm. And as the tide rises, the showing partner can go to the same table. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure I don't go too fast because I have a new iteration. Robbie hasn't even heard me talk about it before. Uh, <laughs> but I want to make sure that we cover the ground we need to cover before I just keep on firing out some things. Well, one last thing before anyone else chimes in. The biggest thing that you need to know about that showing partner model is you earn the right to graduate from being a showing partner to being an agent. And I think there's, if there's one thing I would, I would say plagues the real estate industry at many levels is the fact that we give so much out to agents and we don't make people earn things. And everything in your business should be earned. Nothing should be given, especially in production-based roles. The biggest thing you should know is that somebody graduating out of the showing partner role is not going to be based on time passing. It's based off of some type of production based metric. It's not just, hey, cool, 12 months have passed, you graduate. There are metrics they're hitting where they're earning it. Their behaviors, their habits are earning it. So just wanted to add that caveat as well. Well, okay. So my, I, if it looks like I'm typing, it's because I'm taking notes, just so everybody knows I'm not sending emails. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, you might as well put it out there. Um, so what about, okay, so I'm hearing, and I don't want to mess up your presentation, but I'm hearing why it's better for the broker. And conceptually, I understand how it's better for the, for the showing partner, given the person you're hiring. And the agent who's getting the showings done. So I understand that mm -hmm. the interplay between the showing agent and the realtor, um, people are asking about it. And, and honestly, I'm sure. curious about it because it just sounds like it, it, without knowing how it works, it seems like it could be really messy. Hmm. For, for the client? Uh, no, Barry? but like, I'm just thinking of disorganized agents and then you know, showing agents and then, hey, they want one, two, three Smith Street. Who writes the offer? Who talks to the listing agent? Like all that stuff. Ash, can yeah. I chime in quick on that? And then Please. I want you to. So I think the analogy here that I like to use is in, in our world, people that are using the showing partner model and there's an agent and a showing partner, the agent is essentially bookending the experience is probably the way to view it. So the agent is winning somebody over, setting the expectations, winning the business, which is the highest dollar producing activity, right? Winning somebody over, you know, killing five out of five opportunities like Hatch is saying. So they're bookending it, winning it all over. They're setting the expectation that they have a showing partner and the whole purpose of the showing partner is to help you find your dream home. And the funny thing is you set the expectation and nobody cares. Why? Because it benefits the client. What happens then, you know, I have clients that are doing this at a pretty high level. They use an app called Marco Polo. And what happens is when the showing partners out doing showings with their clients, they're literally sending polo videos to the agent in a group with the client, the showing partner and the agent. So it feels like they're all connected. The showing partner and the agent, of course, are in constant communication, but the showing partner is taking the lead on helping somebody find the home. They're the one oftentimes that are doing all the communication. 
setting up the safe search or literally helping them find the home, conducting the showing. There's times, let's say Eric's the agent, I'm the showing partner and Barry, you're the client. Mm -hmm. You and I are talking all the time. I'm going and showing you homes. And Eric doesn't even know we're going looking at one, two, three mainstream until afterwards when I send him a polo and be like, Hatch, we found it, right? And then now we're writing the offer. So they are maintaining it, bookending it, right? And then the agent steps back in when it comes to writing the offer and doing the negotiating. Does that kind so of help? Are, yeah, no, actually, I, so I didn't know that, but when I brought on agents, I didn't pay them a salary. Um, I should have because I never had a client care that I was having somebody else show the home. I just right. said, I can't be in two places at once. You know, so nobody ever cares, but um, so then does the, I'm, I told you guys, I'm going to be selfish. So does the agent <laughs> uh, um, that is having the showing partner show the homes when they get back the, the, oh yeah, they like one, two, three main street. So they write the offer and they're now taking the ball and kind of running with it as far as talking to the listing agent and leveraging a transaction manager once it's ratified or agreed to. Yep. So, so let's say Gabe is the showing partner in this. Barry, you're the agent. Mm -hmm. Gabe just showed Robbie the house. Robbie loves it. So what Gabe does is he'll send a Marco Polo and he'll say, Barry, we think we found the one. Robbie, uh, Robbie loves it. Um, you immediately are going to shoot a video back and you're going to say, and Robbie's in this message, by the way. You're going to be like, Robbie, awesome. We talked about strategy. I'm going to call you in 10 minutes. Want to give you a heads up. So now you're literally taking the baton. It's being handed off and passed to you where it is all you now. The okay. agent who was the listing agent may, may call up Gabe and be like, dude, what did Robbie think of it? And Gabe will always speak in a proverbial we. Uh, he, he'll say, we love the house. Uh, my partner will be uh, contacting you about making an offer. We'll, we'll always speak in a proverbial we from the original consult to how you communicate with your clients to how you communicate with the other agents. It's a we mm -hmm. for other agents. That's the biggest hiccup. The yep. biggest hiccup is not from the clients and it's not from your own team members. The biggest hiccup is from your uh, uh, other people that are in your market that are your competition because that's just mm -hmm. new to them. Yep. But I, if, if I were in a consult uh, with Robbie, I would say, uh, I would say to Robbie, okay, Robbie, tell me what you know about the market right now. And, it like, hold on, Eric, Eric in a yeah. consult. So you, in this position, I want to talk in time frame. I just want to, so people have a visual of what's going on. The consult, you're the agent in this uh, scenario, and this is at the very beginning. Yep, yep. So yeah, thank you for that framework. Uh, in, in the consult, let's say I'm trying to communicate to Robbie what this is. I'm going to say, Robbie, what do you know of the market right now? It's going to be a question-based approach. Um, what have you heard from your neighbors and friends and coworkers? Um, would it be advantageous to you if there was more than just me working on showing you houses? Would you be frustrated if I was double booked and I couldn't get you into a house until tomorrow and that house sold today, right? I'm going to ask all these leading questions that are going to get Robbie to be like, man, I really want somebody else. And I'd say, well, Robbie, the great news is that you don't just get me, you get an entire team of us. I mean, that's how we talk about our transaction coordinators and our ISAs. Right. This is just another nuance of that is mm -hmm. you're getting all of us. We all are specialists in this area because your home buying process is a big enough deal that it can't be just me. You deserve more than just me. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And we've done that for years, really, on the on the listing side with listing partners and all that to leverage time. But for some reason, I've had this mental block personally on the showing partner side on, on the buy side. I, I don't know why, because when you say it, it's just like, yes, yes, this all makes sense. So um, I'm I, so I, there are a couple of questions I want to get to here in a second, but I'm, I'm going to back up one. I don't think we really talked about, you said other than new, right? Mm -hmm. These new agents that need to earn their seat at the table, which I agree with. Uh, can you give me just a couple things? What are you looking for in a showing partner? I'm guessing it's not just a free for all. You have a heartbeat and a license. So I'd like to know a little <laughs> bit before we start talking about more about the transaction down the road, what are you using to identify or look for in a showing partner? Yeah, first we'll talk disc profile. I think that's probably the most common language that people can understand. Uh, this is going to mirror a buyer agent. Um, I think that uh, a showing partner will have a likelihood to maybe have a higher S. Uh, and S is the most common, S is stable team player. Uh, they're, they're the ones that are the rule followers of the world. Um, the high I is of course somebody who wants to be social. And so usually have somebody who's social and likes to connect. 
Certainly you can be a high D or a high C. I think that the disc profile is like 25% of decision-making, but you look for somebody who is wanting to get in with some stability and wants uh, to have some support. Now, the next piece is, and it's so great. Sharon here just said, I hear it all and I'm with Gabe, seems red finish, uh, like, like it's like Redfin. Redfin doesn't allow people to graduate. They don't allow them a, a chance to earn a seat at the table. They don't give them unlimited opportunities to grow wealth but they are treating it as a business. And that's the mindset you need to have when it comes mm -hmm. to the showing partner model is because it's a salary, it's not a commission. And that means there's a fiduciary responsibility on you to hire the right person. <clears throat> and so mm -hmm. Gabe, to your question is who is the right person? You want to find somebody who's the culture fit that you can trust your kids with, trust your clients with, and that is a mm -hmm. direct extension of you. That word mm -hmm. culture is so overused, but I don't know another way to articulate it. Mm -hmm. So uh, for us, culture is 50% of our decision-making, 25% is the disc, as I just talked about. Um, and then the other 25% is this little nuanced idea of hunger, mm -hmm. is I want somebody who is willing to subscribe to the lifestyle of real estate, although they're only signing up to be a W-2 employee. Mm -hmm. And so therein lies that nuance, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That lifestyle piece means you're going to work nights, you're going to work weekends, you're going to have some random days off. And that mm -hmm. person has to be able to embrace the lifestyle of it. Yep. Now, uh, I, I, I'm reading some of these questions coming yep. in too. So I think I might answer some of them as I go. Um, you, you're going to tell me one quick ray there. So I want to, what I was hearing though also, are you hiring this with the intent that this is going to be someone who has a seat at the table as a buyer's agent as well? So, okay. so let me, yes, in most situations, but this is the new nuance that Robbie hasn't heard me say yet is I think that there are three iterations to a showing partner, three different paths. One is the lifer, okay? Mm -hmm. The lifer is probably the person who is the higher S. They don't have a huge financial ticker. They love real estate. They love relationships, but heavy negotiations or the full lifestyle of real estate seems to be crushing to them. There are a number of people that would be unbelievable realtors who had a consistent life and would crush it for your clients that don't want the pressure that you and I wear as, as major negotiators and, and relationship burdens, right? So the and, first is- and, and on that hatch, it's funny you say that they probably don't want to bear the risk because being an agent, remember, it's yeah. the risk of if I don't produce, I don't put food on the table. So- that, that element of risk is probably playing into that 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 piece of somebody being a life trading that. So wanted to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the second person is the graduate. That's probably the most common. In our world, if you want to graduate from being a showing partner, you have to have at least two years on the job. It used to be a year. We've changed it to two years. Two years on the job, and you have to do at least 20 deals from your own procuring, meaning sphere or open houses because we want them to be able to feed themselves and be on their own. Cause if they want our company appointments, they have to be able to be bringing their contribution to the table. A lot of my coaching clients will be one year and five deals or 10 deals, whatever it is. But again, everything is earned, nothing is given. Mm -hmm. And so you can graduate either because you're so good. We can't keep you in that role anymore, which means you check all the boxes. The team has grown by such a cord that you need other players. Most of us don't have benches, right? And so this showing partner model gets you a, an instant bench or the third iteration is somebody quits or somebody's fired and you need to move somebody into the starting roster. But either way, the, you have that person in your ecosystem. Nope, now here's the, here, here's the third nuance that's new to Robbie and this is the empire builder. I wanna go back to my years in production, 2013 and 2014 were my last two years in production. Once my daughter was born, I got out of production. Uh, but I sold 150 homes a year each personally without a showing partner while running the team, while doing like I was 90 to 110 hours a week, just grinding of the 150 I did each year, uh, 50 of those were new construction and the other hundred were my sphere. That was 2013 and 2014. When I looked at my 2020 numbers, I did 35 sphere deals that were all referrals to my team. 35. I, I dropped by 65%. Because what I did was this, I took all my sphere and referrals and I handed them to Barry, which is fine because I want to empower and lift up my team members, but I handed them to Barry as a buyer agent. But what I did is I taught my sphere that I'm not their guy anymore. Mm -hmm. 
and I handed off the transaction, but unintentionally I handed off the relationship to. Mm -hmm. And this empire builder, if I were to go back and do it all over again, I would have hired a showing partner that would have been my showing partner, not for a season, but for life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pay this person a commission and a salary and whatever I can to keep those relationships and those referrals, because when they come back to Barry, they're going to come back to Eric and we both will win and the tide will rise. And so when you're saying what's the path of a showing partner, it's really a matter of what's best for them, not what's best for me. It's a matter of what's best for them, because now you're giving them a pathway to success and getting them exactly what they want. And that's, that's the unique thing about most people's teams is we say we have this box and you have to live in this box. And if you don't fit in this box, you can't be on my team. I love it. We every day say, what kind of box do you want to live in? And we go and make that for them. We've had iterations on iterations on iterations. We're at like volume 7.0 this year of just changing crap in our ecosystem because I want that's the kind of team I'd want to be on if I was that agent. And so we're going to open up pathways and careers for people. And we just simply say, you need to start as a showing partner. Okay. I love it. So I, I am going to jump into some of these questions uh, and stop hogging time myself. Uh, I'll grab some that I think are right where we're at now. So uh, is this a part-time position or full-time position? And how do you structure the hours uh, when people want to see, you know, the houses during the day and stuff? So part-time or full-time? Full-time. Full-time only. And there are two nuances. You can either, uh, you can pay the person a, uh, a salary as we fully recommend. That's what I prefer all day, every day. Uh, I see Gustavo has a question about, can you pay this person uh, a commission instead? Sure, you can pay them a commission, but now you're down to just this pinky of somebody who can float with just their savings account and that they either have to have another job or like there's, there's just there's problems when you pay somebody just commission because you limit your talent pool. Mm -hmm. And so we pay a full time salary. It's uh, it, it's not hourly. They don't track their hours in the mornings. They train a showing partner has three jobs in this order. Number one, leverage their agents. Okay. If you build it right, let's say you're a solopreneur right now and you hire your first partner. Notice I'm saying partner and not showing partner. This person may bring your dog to the vet. This person may pick up your dry cleaning. This person may run your groceries because their job, if you tell them in the beginning is to leverage you, then they leverage you. Of course, you're going to use them for inspections and showings and other things too, but really they're there to leverage you. And don't, don't hire somebody to be like, you're going to do all real estate. And then they go and pick up your dog's poop and bring it to the vet. Like that's not the right move. But my personal assistant has done that for me. And I told her even before she started, like she's going to do some weird stuff. And sure enough, we're, we're still good. So <laughs> job number one for a showing partner or for a partner is to leverage the agent. Mm -hmm. Task number two is to train. We need to not practice on our clients. And so they are training hours a day, two to three hours a day in our ecosystem, especially for the first about 120 days. Task number three is to lead generate because yes, we're paying them a salary, but they also can earn in our world a 15% commission when they refer a buyer or uh, a seller. And that can come from open houses or their own sphere. And so they can earn commission on that. We had a showing partner last year, guys. We had a showing partner make $65,000 because he referred that much business. That's real money, honey, you know? And now he's just crushing. And he he climbed uh, the ladder for two years and was frustrated that he uh, that he couldn't get to where he wanted. But what happens is if I would have graduated Danny up, all these people over here would have been pissed because he didn't follow the same path that everybody else followed. I love that. So when you said refer, uh, Danny, we'll use Danny as an example, uh, uh, lead generates, get someone, hands it off, buyer, uh, goes to an agent that has a seat at the table, and then I'm assuming Danny's the showing partner. The, the other benefits that the showing partner on that. Yep, correct. He's still in the relationship. He's still benefiting right. and making money off the transaction. Um, as he gets into year two, he's now actually starting to negotiate some of these contracts too. Because yep. we're, we're, tr we're training through great leadership when, in this model, right? We're not just throwing Danny to here saying, now figure it out. It's a development process. All right, so we're just going to another question here. So uh, you mentioned that it's a salary. I am the team leader. If I give this showing assistant service to my team, do I charge the buyer's agent a fee for using the showing assistant to help offset the price? Uh, yeah, uh, there, are, there are four iterations of the showing partner model because Robbie, we started this in 2014. Is that right? Yeah, 
Yeah, and and my my team didn't see the vision that I saw. They thought this is going to be a cost and this is not going to be a benefit. Mm-hmm. By the way, once everybody had their own showing partner and the showing partner's salary is paid in full by my agents. I don't pay a dime of it, but it didn't start that way. Mm-hmm. We had four iterations. Iteration number one is rent a partner. That's what this person is talking about right now. Mm-hmm. So if Barry is the partner, uh, he can be rented out for $25 an hour. I'm paying his salary because I need my team to start believing in it and they need to get the taste in their mouth of what it's like to have Barry cover that inspection and and help with the showings and and to be a part in the extension. So that's phase number one is rent a partner. Phase number two is share a partner. Robbie and Gabe, my top two agents on my team, uh, see Barry and they're like, hey, we really like this. And so Robbie pays for 25% of Barry's salary. Gabe pays for 25% of Barry's salary, and I pay for 50% as the company owner. Now, the moment that Gabe has Barry on his payroll, he's going to use him as much as possible. It's not renting by the hour. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to milk this turnip and get all the juice out of it that I can. But Robbie wants to do the same, same thing. So phase two bashes heads pretty quickly. Yeah, which leads to phase three. And we say, man, Gabe and Barry have a great rhythm together. They're wearing matching shirts. So you know that they're going to be a great partnership. And so now Gabe is paying for 50% of Barry's salary and I'm paying for the other 50%. But in the beginning, I've cast the vision to Gabe saying, Gabe, Barry will be your full financial responsibility when. Mm -hmm. And the when is when we see your sales increase by 15%. When it's a full year, I'm not going to pay a salary after 90 days or a full year, whatever it may be. You're going to cast the vision long before you say all of a sudden, hey, Gabe, guess what? You got to pay for this full salary now. Like, I'm not going to surprise my agents. We're going to have a plan from moment one. And you can start anywhere in that process because step number four is Gabe is in charge of Barry. Barry is on Gabe's team. It is a mini team, a mini micro ecosystem that we've created, which is a leadership model. You know, Jesus had 12 uh, disciples and y'all ain't Jesus. So you shouldn't have more than five or six. You know what I mean? Uh, You you need to not have a sales manager represent 20 people. You got to have that tight knit. And and the best thing you can do is to have these small tight knit teams. And Gabe is in charge of the full salary of Gabe, uh, of Barry, excuse me. Uh, Gabe is even paying the payroll taxes. He's the trainer and developer of it. And guess what? The likelihood of Barry succeeding in our world is 100%. Dozens of showing partners have started with us and every single one of them has made it as an agent. Awesome. Well, you're bringing them into that ecosystem and you know, real estate's an industry where you can, you can make money a lot of different ways. And so by giving them something that gives them stability, they can start to take advantage of the other opportunities that are presented to them. So I think, and in that sense, you can use gatherers you know, you don't have to have a bunch of hunters. Um, it's very fascinating. I love it. Uh, get some more of these questions. Uh, Brett asked, uh, does the showing partner handle their own database or pass along to the lead buyer's agent? Robbie, why don't you talk about the iteration in our world of, of who does what lead generation? Yeah, so let's, for us, you all need to know that in our world, we have four full-time ISAs we just brought on a fifth. So in our world, every single company lead, Wailopo leads, Sierra leads, uh, our Zillow opportunities, radio, anything that's coming in all flows through our ISA department. That's a conscious decision we've made to make sure that leads don't slip through the cracks and we don't th- go through the ebbs and flows of, hey, I'm an agent, I'm selling a ton of homes and now I don't have time to call my leads. We don't have that problem because our agents take the lead for, our, sorry, our ISAs who are all licensed agents, by the way, they just don't sell homes they are taking the full-time lead on, on chasing the lead. So for us, um, what it comes down to is our ISAs are taking all those opportunities. Um, to get at that, that question of a showing partner, are they servicing their opportunities if they bring it in? Generally, when a showing partner creates an opportunity from their own SOI, because our agents are in charge of chasing their friends, family, past clients. I think that's one of the cool things about, and again, we can do another webinar about ISAs or go back, One of the cool things about building an ISA model is your agents still need to lead generate. They're just lead generating to their friends, family, past clients, people they're more willing to talk to anyways. But when a showing partner does convert an opportunity and they're still in in a showing partner phase, they're going to hand that opportunity over to the agent in our world that they're paired with. In other words, if I'm the showing partner, 
Gabe is the agent that I'm working for and I bring in Eric, Eric's going to be working with Gabe as the agent. I'm going to be the showing partner, showing the homes to him, all that stuff. But Gabe's going to be the agent because I, that's not my job. That's not what I do. So anything you want to add half? No, I think that, I think that's good. It, it's, we're taking these agents and we're adding them to the ecosystem and we want them to chase their sphere as much as possible. And re the relationship will win all day, every day. So if they have the relationship, they should be the one to maintain that. I love that. Uh, Sean asked, uh, how do you coach showing partners to have total buy-in with the team or the team leaders who endorse the team brand rather than themselves? I think I know what your answer is going to be there, but. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a culture fit from moment one. Uh, we, we endorse the team and yet the team, if they're doing their job right, is celebrating their people. And that's the nuance is if Danny is our showing partner and Danny is supposed to be funneling everything to the team and endorse the team, the only way that feels like a right mutual relationship is if the team is celebrating Danny, both inwardly and to the public. Yep. I, I love that. And that comes down to hiring, like you said, culture. Yeah, yep, 100%. That. Love that. You know, there's, there's a mindset when you think about hiring, it's interesting, Barry. I mean, you you run a, a, a heck of a team. Mm -hmm. When you started, uh, do you remember when you hired your first admin? Yes, it was in two thousand and fourteen. Ten hours a week, sitting in front of REOs, waiting for the power company to turn it on, and I was so scared. Uh huh. I was I mean, it, freaking out. Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> And, and were you diligent on that hire? Were you like scrupulous on making sure that you got the right person? Cause this was like your new wife. No, it was my buddy's friend from church. Okay. Our buddy's, my buddy's wife who was working for an attorney and she was miserable. That was it. And it was, so it was very, and she to this day has been one of the best admin I've ever had. Yeah. Um, but um, so you got, you got lucky, which usually doesn't happen. Well, and then once she had kids, I've gone through four. Yeah. <laughs> so you know when, when you Barry, when, when you hired your first agent did you just bring on a buddy somebody who could fog a mirror it was a past client okay yeah and it made everything worse yeah yeah <laughs> see see the 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 point i'm trying to iterate here is that when we hire somebody on a payroll of some sort we tend to be more diligent than when mm -hmm. we hire somebody to earn commission Mm -hmm. because now it's like, shoot, this is $2,500 a month. Like, how am I going to afford that? What am I going to do? If I fail, go figure. But when we hire agents, we're like, Hey dudes, come on in. It's going to be a party. We're going to find out how to make this work. But guess what? That agent just got handed five leads and those five leads should all close and they're going to close one or two of them. And so this person actually just cost you like $40,000 where your admin costs you 2,500 and the showing partner is the same thing you will tend to bring on more of the right talent to the right culture fits when you're actually paying them a salary because something's wrong in our psyche where we think that we can be irresponsible in bringing on uh, agents and we can be really responsible when bringing on admin. So, all right. So this is making a lot more sense than I thought it would. And um, so thank you for explaining it. Now I have another question. The logistics of the rent-a-partner. Um, so you're paying this person to work full-time. Mm -hmm. Does the team have like a Calendly link to show homes or how, how is... How Can I chime in on this real quick, Hatch? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I actually would advise... So we went through phase one, two, three, and four, like Eric brought up. It's not saying you have to go through phase one, two, three, and four in your business. There are many people now that are intentionally skipping phase one and two in some way, shape or form and going straight into phase three or into phase four. So you do not, and I think Eric, tell me if you agree with this, phase one and phase two are logistically a nightmare in a lot of different ways. We, we yep. move they're, ju they're just to get buy-in. If somebody can see it and they're sold on it, then so mm -hmm. be it. But yeah, I, I'd start at phase four every day if, if I could. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So don't hear it as, oh, I need to go do the rental partner. The rental partner is the worst form for many reasons. Agents won't use them. That's why we moved out of it so quickly was our agents refused to use them. And I don't think it was just because agents were cheap and they didn't want to spend $25. I think it was because they didn't fully trust that person because they weren't aligned. And people ask why we use the term partner and not assistant. 
It's because this person is a partner in your business. Truly, you are interconnected with them. You're working side by side with them. And what we've seen happen is that person who comes in as a showing partner is glued to your hip. To this day, we're seeing now where showing partners become an agent aligned with the agent they were paired with, hence the term partner. But Barry, I, I would say truly, man, skip phase one and two. Just we well, talk about that historically, but try to skip it if you could. Well, I tried one and nobody used the person. So, yep. okay. There, yeah. And so, so Barry, sometimes you got to go first, right? Le leaders, yes. leaders need to go first. And if you're the rainmaker that's in production, you might need to be the first one to go. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of you know Mike Novak. In fact, I just did a webinar an hour ago with Mike Novak, one of the best webinars I've ever done. So watch our uh, coaching, our, our, uh, our YouTube channel for Hatch Coaching because it is gold of how buyers can win in this market. Mm -hmm. Mike has three showing partners for himself now. And Mike has an agent on his team. His name's Chuck. And Chuck is a slayer of, of, of business. Yes. Chuck flew to Fargo a year and a half ago to learn about the showing partner model. And finally, two months ago or three months ago, he finally hired his first showing partner because Mike had to lead the way. Chuck even came and tasted and saw, and he still couldn't get there because most agents on our teams don't have entrepreneurial mindsets. Your mm -hmm. goal is to get them to be intrapreneurial, that they can build a business within a business. And so Mike had to go first. All of a sudden, Mike saw, oh my gosh, I'm slaying it. Mike's going to close in the Seattle market, 120 deals, just him, his own personal production wow. this year, which is insane. And Mike will show one house a week mm. at best. And, and so he's, he's living the fat life, but he had to get there and he had to prove it for Chuck to get there. And so for a lot of you, if you're on teams, you maybe have to be the first to go, or you have to mm -hmm. find your early adopter. If you're a solopreneur and you're thinking, do I make this hire? I'm going to tell you, hire an admin before you hire a showing partner. Yes. Get that leverage to get that $15 an hour minutia killing stuff off your plate before you bring in a showing partner. It should go admin, admin, showing partner in that order. The first admin takes all the crap off your plate. The second one starts checking off your, I wish I could get to this list. So that, that's your, that's your marketing energy. That's your, your sphere diving in even more. So, but the first one's taking off transaction, coordinating and listing work and runner duties and all those other things. And then right. comes the partner. All right. So I guess maybe I had ADD or something, cause I only have three phases. So phase one is uh, rent a partner. Phase two is share, which yeah. is, um, you know, you've got your top agents and in your scenario, two of them all were both 25% yeah. each. Now the third is, um, Split. you know, the F split F between phase, phase three is yeah. Gabe, Gabe is paying half. I'm paying half. If I'm the team owner and, Gabe's and what's the, phase the four agent. is just phase, Gabe phase four is, is it's all Gabe. Yeah. F phase four is, is there now their own uh, team together. So Barry, here's how you should view phase three is you're subsidizing it. You're subsidizing the showing partner costs for your agent. And in phase four, which you, you should only, when you're talking to your teams, the vision should be, you're going to go to phase four. It's just that matter of when we hit X and you can afford it. When so I'm what if I just said, all right, I'm going to give you guys a full-time showing assistant for three months for free to get you addicted like a drug dealer. Is that okay? Oh man, give that rock away, baby. If, if, <laughs> if, <laughs> I watched Breaking Bad once. So now that's, oh how, <laughs> that's how hip I am. Uh, Barry and I are former pastors. So we've now told you everything we know about drug dealing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, that's a good question. I was actually a little surprised by that. So I'd like to dig deeper. I thought you were going to say you wanted them to have some buy-in, but you're saying give it. Uh, I mean, if you can get the buy-in, absolutely. If you can't get the buy-in, let them start sampling. Let them, let them get used to it. Yeah, and, they're not they're buying it. Not, not yeah. on my team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got to give it to them. I mean, just then, you got to find with... an early adopter. Yeah, That's and I was saying. having a conversation with, with an agent, just, you know, she spent hours and hours and hours literally just on the road. That's not even counting opening the doors. And all of a sudden it's like, I, I now I'm already seeing the dwindling of the pipeline. Like, could you imagine how much more you'd be making if you weren't out driving and opening the doors and waiting for the people in front of you to get out? So, I mean, it, it makes total sense and it should be an easy buy-in for somebody who's, you know, the right culture fit and that hunger that you were talking about. They want to do more, but how do I leverage my time and not work 80, 90 hours a week, still do this in 40 or 50. Here's, here's what's going to be the important uh, why. I, I tried to lead with the why of, of the pains that come. I have uh, 
five agents on my team that will sell between 80 and 150 homes each this year. And they haven't left me. These, they, they could leave me at any time and they will be the most successful agents in our town. I know it because it's happened before. As we build these teams within teams and you give somebody leadership and authority and responsibility, and then I'm spending all my time as the owner, as the powerhouse, not with the new people training them, hoping that they can have a seat at the table. My top agents are training them. I spend all my time with my top agents. There's a book called The Pumpkin Plan by Mike Michalowicz. He talks about you're supposed to take the, follow these seven steps on developing these world-class pumpkins that are blue ribbon winning. And when you go to a pumpkin patch, everybody takes their pictures with them. I and my ecosystem have my big pumpkins, my top producers that are doing 80 to 150 deals each. I spend all my time with them because step six in the pumpkin plan is give all your attention to your big pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And so when I started doing that, we had better retention, less headaches, and we scaled our ecosystems and our leadership. And so I have what I've never heard as possible before. And it's not because I'm this magical guru. I've simply empowered people and gotten the hell out of the way. And that's it. I found great people and I've given them not only responsibility, I've given them authority. They're now hiring their own people. We're helping to train and we subsidize and we lift up all the back end support. My top agent, Tyler, has already sold 80 houses this year. It's May 13th as we record this. And Tyler is embedded into our ecosystem and he has more influence than I probably have. But because I show up for Tyler every day to help his business come alive, he's still around and we get to both benefit and make tons of wealth and opportunities because of that. And so if, you, if you're not sold on the model before, how do you keep a great agent around? Is you give them influence and leadership and authority. It's the unspoken piece that most people can't figure out is an agent gets to 24 deals or so, and then we think they're a flight risk and they're gone because we give all of our time to the new people and we mm. just think they got it. And, and the model has to be flipped and changed. And this is the greatest way I know to pour into my big pumpkins. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, uh, somebody asked just to clarify, your first two uh, hires were admins. And then was the third an ISA before a showing partner or the showing partner? Sh showing partner first, because you're still leveraging, hopefully, your sphere and mm -hmm. your low dollar business. I think the ISA mm -hmm. is the fourth hire. I, uh, we have in our YouTube channel uh, as well, we have uh, the five steps, uh, the five key hires that we think you should make first. And by the way, it goes admin, admin, showing partner, ISA, showing partner, because this first showing partner will probably be graduating up. And you need to replace your own production because Gabe, you've been around the block a number of times in real estate. And most of the time when people move out of production uh, and they give all their business to their team members, they're hit what's called the proverbial backhand of like, oh crap, I'm not actually making any money because mm -hmm. they've been subsidizing their entire team with their own personal production. Yep. The way in which you protect yourself from that proverbial backhand is with the partner model. Because you can graduate that partner up and, and support them. The way in which you can avoid that huge pitfall of, oh crap, my team doesn't actually make any money is when you continue to lean on your own production. I think you should be slow to get to sixth and seventh level. Very, very slow on it. And instead, change the process. Get yourself out of the daily minutia because that's what, you don't hate negotiations. You hate showing houses at 845 at night on a Saturday. That's what you hate. Yep. I mean, if you're anything like me, like I love negotiating, man. I love the win. I love the hunt. I love cutting that up and, and winning. Mm -hmm. But turns out I can have my cake and eat it too. And I shouldn't have rushed to get out of production so fast because it cost me millions. Mm -hmm. Gold. That is gold. Uh, let's see. Uh, that one's been answered. Just looking for other questions here. I think we might have them. So again, somebody asked what, why partner over assistant. And before you answer, they're not blowing smoke when they say they believe that because before we started this, I said, awesome. I'm excited to start talking about showing assistance. They're like, it's showing partners. They corrected me before it even started. So can you tell us why again? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is foundational. If, if Robbie, like Robbie, since moment one, uh, Robbie got hired at the end of 2013. We've been together eight years or so. 
And from moment one, I've described Robbie as he's my partner in this business. Before he was ever an owner, before he was ever this chief coach and this, this major influencer, I needed to use the language that Robbie is my partner because there's not a hierarchy in my world. There's a chain of command, but there's not a hierarchy of I am the authority and I get to make all the decisions because it turns out when somebody says, Eric, how many people work for you? My answer is I don't have anybody that works for me. I go to work for them every day. And I have to have that same mindset and philosophy so that Robbie feels like, you know what? I do have responsibility and I do have authority and I do make a difference, which is again, one of those reasons why I think our people stick around for much longer. The other piece is as you're introducing it to agents or to your clients, if I say Robbie's my assistant, they think they're getting the new guy and they think they're getting the schmuck. They think they're getting the, the person who is uh, untrained uh, and, and, and that they don't bring any skill. If I say Robbie's my partner, we're a two-headed monster and we just do different things. It brings an authority on a seriously high level that the word assistant just doesn't. I, yeah. I, I love that. There, and there's a question, sorry, I wanna make sure we get to this because I think Gustavo has a really good question that people are thinking but not asking. So what if you have a small team and you just can't pay that 40K salary? Does it, um, does it pay to scale them as part-time employees or maybe uh, start giving them a little bit more of the commission or a piece of every deal until it closes to scale up? I think a lot of people are probably wondering that. Uh, if you can go full-time, go full-time, whether that's with an assistant or a partner, uh, if you can go full-time, go full-time. A 40K salary is less than $3,500 a month. And if you're paying them a 40K salary, my guess is the commission, uh, the average commission you're getting is probably 10 grand. I was just going to ask if, if he doesn't mind putting it there. I was curious what his average sales price is. Because I think, I think for me, and I, mean, I told you guys before we started this, this is literally as we're rebuilding and restructuring something I'm seriously considering and wanting to do, and I'm even more excited about it now. But it's the opportunities that we're missing because of the people on the road and doing things that are, that are just your killers, right? That already know it versus adding more. So yeah, average price 700K. So yeah. I mean, my thought is what are you missing out on by not having that position? If to, to pay off if 700,000, let's say it's a two and a half percent commission. That's a $20,000 commission, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a 17, $18,000 commission. You got to sell two and a half houses in a year to justify uh, paying that salary. And I will promise you, you won't get 40 hours a week back by having a partner because you're going to be spending time leading them and connecting with them, doing one-on-ones training, but I bet you'll get 20 hours a week back. And what can you do in production to get uh, and to, to justify that 20 hours a week that you get back? What, do, what are you going to do for lead uh, generation? What are you going to do for lead conversion? What are you going to do for past client care? Mm -hmm. If you can take the leap, Remember, you're not paying $40,000 out of pocket. You're paying $3,000 a month, $3,500 a month. I feel like I'm in a vendor booth at a, at a large uh, convention right now. I'm like, All you got to do is sell three more houses and you're going to justify it. But that, that's, how, that's how my brain works is I got to say, man. Well, but it's 100% if, if, true. It's not what you're missing out on, but you hit it right in the head though too. Because Tom, what, is, what is your time worth? Right. One of my favorite exercises going through with this, uh, this uh, calculator I built to understand your value of your time. So not only are you getting the assistance and the other help, but you're also getting your time back and that has value. And I can almost guarantee it's at least that. Well, and, and to add to that, as Eric said, it's, you're going to get 20 hours a week back, almost guaranteed, if not more, 52 weeks a year, that's 1,040 hours. But one thing we're not referencing is the fact that that is the stuff that burns us out. It's the stuff that drains our energy and makes us crappier when we go into lead generation time. So it's not even just the time piece. It's the fact that it's an activity that generally drains our energy. So I, that's a piece you should, should consider as well. Well, and Robbie, you know, now that uh, we've heard this end to end, you know, they, correct me if I'm wrong, but the ISA portion that you run, um, that basically is teeing up for the, the licensed agent that's, you know, that has the showing partner working for them. So they really are only doing high product, production activity. Is that right? We are Henry Fording real estate, right? Literally what we're doing, what I mean by that is we're taking the real estate process mm -hmm. and breaking it into piece by piece and creating an assembly line like Henry Ford did 
to create the Model T. That's all we're doing here is we're breaking it up so people can specialize in their different things, right? Nice. ISAs focus on the lead generation. Agents convert the opportunity, earn the trust, which is really difficult to do. The showing partners help people find homes, leverage or the person, the transaction coordinators, of course, step back in to manage the details. All we're doing in our business is we just consistently have conversations of how do we keep breaking this in into pieces that allows for leverage and specialization? Because when people are specializing and focus on their track, they're able to exponentially grow their production because they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. So it, it's that, that's what's happening. And yes, the ISA piece is just one of the, we talk about laps in our business and really we'll probably break it up into more pieces, but we keep doing that. So, okay. So you guys didn't ask me to do this, um, but I'm just, I'm curious. So I'm a team owner and I'm like, wow, this sounds great. If I go to Hatch Coaching and contact you guys for your services, is there a scenario where, you know, um, cause you know, you're, you're, you've got all these different departments. Do you guys t do the two of you take on one client or do you take on one and then pass them to the other or back and forth or yeah, usually what's happened depends on where you're at in our in your business. To be honest, where, and whether you go with Eric or whether you get you coach with us. To be completely frank, depends okay. on where you're at. I, I would say if there's, I want to do a shameless plug for us just for one moment because I think it would be valuable for people. Is if you want to expose your world to these ideas, we do a summit in Fargo in September, and the cool piece about it is Eric leads the main stage stuff, so do I, but our whole team hosts. So. These agents that we're talking about, Tyler Lindell, who's going to sell 100 plus homes, that these agents and showing partners, if you want to get hand by hand, if you, or if you want to get, you know, rub shoulders with these people, come to that summit. It, it, it's a really easy way to expose your agents or your team to these ideas firsthand. Because hearing us talk about it's one thing, sending this to your agents is one thing, but them walking and talking to the agent that's doing it or talking to a showing partner about it. Is going to change things completely. So that's another we thing. should. That's the summit sounds really interesting. So that's in Fargo. Yeah, in Fargo. So we should probably, if you don't have a passport, you should probably start working on one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's a great all, event. Almost, it almost Canada needs a, almost Canada <laughs> needs a passport. Yeah. Uh, no, we're <laughs> expecting uh, we're expecting two hundred and fifty to three hundred people this year. So. Uh, uh, and well, for sure, I, I see Diane says, please post details about the summit. We're in this weird transition phase where we're like about to launch a new website. And so we're going to have that up in like a week. Uh, so hopefully Wailopo lets us uh, promote uh, and, and push that out because I think it'll be gold for people. But let me say this is... Uh, People can coach with Robbie or myself. That is kind of the, the bottom of the funnel. That's that's where very few will go. Simply uh, the, 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 the price is high, our time is precious. And so we protect that. We've built hundreds of training videos that help mm -hmm. people on how to grow a real estate team, how to convert leads, all these other things. Those are just on a monthly subscription. So it's really easy to access that and you can digest it when it's best for you. Uh, we also have a mastermind group that's some of the top teams in the country. Uh, you gotta produce at least a million dollars in, in GCI annually or a hundred homes in order to qualify. And so mm -hmm. we gather three times a year, we do uh, monthly calls together. And, and so we have a lot of different elements as well as we give away 97% of our stuff for free uh, on, on webinars, on YLOPO and on our YouTube channel. So hatchcoaching.com is where you wanna go for all of that. Yeah, and you also do the Hatch Huddle, I think, right? That's like I do, a, yeah. Thanks for the promo, time. Barry. That's nice. We do we do a Hatch Huddle, Robbie and myself, every Monday at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. We spend 45 minutes diving deep into topics. Think of it as like an interactive podcast uh, yeah. where your topics are going to be what's covered. It's free for the first 30 days, uh, and then after that, it's just 99 bucks a month. So okay. uh, we're bringing we're bringing some real gold on that. We think it's probably some of the most valuable stuff that we're doing because. We're covering real time live things that are issues in your world. And we're in a series right now about lead conversion. So uh, check out hatchcoaching.com again, sign up for the hatch huddle. Yeah, no, yeah, my pleasure to bring it up. I know you guys are bringing the content and I'll shoot you my cash app name later. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> no, this is awesome guys. Uh, and obviously any other information, really same good. website, more questions about this. I know you guys said you have a lot of videos and more things you've done to go deeper into this as far as structuring it and all that. So uh, we'll definitely be chatting. I, uh, I'm i really excited about this actually. It makes a lot, 
a lot more sense to me um, in where we're at, where we're going. So I'm excited. I was texting my team. Hey, this is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's called the pop and drop. Hard. Yeah, the, that's the old pop and drop, Barry, is the Rainmaker <laughs> has an idea and they just crap it out of their team and hope that they but figure it out. Yep. yep. <laughs> All, All right. I love it, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate You're your welcome. time. Uh, Barry, always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Catch you guys next time. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Peace. Ben, See enjoy. Thanks all.